In today's Elden Ring video, we'll take a look at an updated Reaper of Death build for level 150. I really like the idea of sites the last time I covered the low level version of this build and this is what came out of it after building upon that foundation and right now starting new progress in Journey 3. But I've expanded upon that setup quite a bit, there's a couple new items and abilities that we covered in recent videos that I really loved including the Black Flame Tornado, so much so that I've included those in this build as well. Now when building the Reaper of Death there was one theme that I wanted to 100% abide to and that was the fact that this absolutely needed to use a scythe as a main weapon. Now the winged scythe that we used initially with this build served us pretty well early on but it eventually gets outclassed by other weapons and skill combinations and besides I also wanted a lot more control over what came out of it. Which is why we switched to the Grave Scythe, likely the best Reaper weapon in all Elden Ring, looks even more appropriate for the theme we're going with, has some of the best base damage in the game, even compared to other weapon categories, and it also lets you pick your own Ash of War. This brings us to the Phantom Slash Ash of War. This fits the build idea perfectly and it's a very strong skill to have. When using it, you summon a spectral form that charges forward and deals damage with the weapon you currently have on you, which is then followed by your own character performing a similar attack. You can also follow up with a second cast at the end of the first one to finish off any enemy with a strike down again that's also again initiated by the spectral form and then followed by your own character. Now the reason I found this to be so fitting with the build isn't just because of the phantom you cast but also because of the skills utility. It's an amazing gap closer between you and your enemy and oftentimes even a way to dodge incoming attacks especially since you can then follow up with a charge which kind of like moves your character forward almost instantly. Even if you get interrupted midway though which makes this even more interesting yeah that spectral form will still continue to deal its damage as if it was never interrupted. In fact, it has no problem to hit enemies through walls or obstacles when your character might not otherwise. Now it does require a bit of time to get used to this skill, there is a wind up on it you should be aware of and you can also miss if the enemy moves by the time you land it, so eventually you will have to learn and nail down these movements but it's totally worth it because if you do hit the target it hits like a truck dealing over 5k easily even on some of these enemies right here. Basically every attack that you do is doubled by the ghost that you summon including the full weapon damage and whatever other enchant that you have on your weapon when you use this ability. This is especially useful against some of the enemies in Lindell, especially some of those well knight enemies that tend to either cast spells or shield blocks. It seems that phantom slash will trigger much faster than their attacks and because your phantom strikes first this means it opens up enemies for your following attacks or makes them waste a shield block that you can then bypass yourself and deal that damage and of course still have options for the follow-up. Now in terms of some of the other skills that we use to buff up our damage because we apply the Ash of War with a non-magical affinity this leaves us room to apply well any magical type of enchant on the weapon but in this case I'm using the Blood Flame Blade incantation that we further buff not just in terms of normal damage but also for the fire damage component with the flame grand me strength both of which will actually last for a very long time over a minute each this couple with the innate bleed on the grave scythe has by default earns you a proc of bleed within just two attacks or well four hits if you count the individual hits from your character and from the phantom but it's always going to be that extra damage that you get on top very helpful oftentimes interrupts enemies attacks i've noticed this especially on some of the tougher bosses bosses, they usually do a swing and because the bleed procs on the fourth hit they just get stunned momentarily and then you can follow up maybe with some other types of attacks. At the same time we're also making use of the earth tree seal. I was initially debating between this and the god slayer seal since that one also buffs some of the black flame spells that I've also included in this build but at this level of faith of about 80 it seems that the earth tree seal simply outperforms the other one at least from my testing even for black flame related incantations so that's likely because of the difference in faith scaling that you have with the earth tree and not with the other and because we also use other damage sources outside of the black flame damage i decided to keep the earth tree seal and make that the main one i will use with this build now as far as other items go as i've said i've wanted to expand more on this build and it might be a bit overwhelming at first for some but as i will explain in just a little bit it will make a lot of sense and it actually plays quite
quite nicely. On top of the Grave Scythe, I also wanted to include a Black Flame Tornado Ash of War, but I did not want to sacrifice the Phantom Slash that I had on the Grave Scythe. Luckily, the Godskin Peeler has that same skill by default, it's still enchantable and it also drops much earlier than if you were to take the Ash of War counterpart that comes from Crumbling Azula. In fact, it also deals about the same amount of damage that I've tested so far, at the very least between the Ash of War and the one on the Peeler, so that's why I proceeded to have the Peeler as kind of like a secondary weapon to the Grave Scythe. Now, why is it that we're switching to the Peeler, you might ask? Well, simply because it's one of the highest damage abilities in the entire game with a high faith build like this one, and there are certain situations when switching to more damage and less utility might be needed. This is further coupled with a Flame of the Red Mains that I put on a Misericord. It doesn't really matter here what you put it on. I only put it on that one because I really like the idea, but we only need like the Flame of the Red Mains component of it to stun the enemy. This is the best way right now in Elden Ring to fully stun any enemy in the game in just a couple of shots. So this is the reason why we're doing that. If there's any boss that moves too much and you want to stop it to kind of unleash that Black Flame Tornado, this is the way I'm doing it, immediately switching back to that Peeler, or in this case, I had been testing this with the Scythe instead, but it's the same process, and then just unleashing the whole Tornado for at least like 10k damage depending on the enemy. Usually for bosses like Malekath, which is notoriously mobile and high damage boss, this setup completely counters him, it takes just a few seconds to completely push him in the second phase, and then a few more seconds to completely annihilate him from that point on. This is basically what I ran with so that I can switch between these and have a lot more versatility depending on what situation I'm in. If I were to go against bosses that don't require this setup, I would normally go with the Scythe and that Spectral attack instead, and if it was a problem with the movement, then I would switch to the Red Mains plus the Black Flame Tornado. Now, as far as the Talismans go, in my opinion, I think that only two over here are really mandatory, including the Shard of Alexander to buff up that skill damage on the weapon, and of course the Fire Scorpion Charm since we're doing so much fire damage, either from that enchantment on the weapon or simply from the Black Flames. The rest is up to you if you want Source Seals for more HP and stats, or just more HP or defense-oriented talismans, or if you want a certain type of stat to mix in with, well, some of these weapons that might have minimum requirements. In my case, I've invested too many points into Faith, so I needed a few more into Dexterity to have the Peeler, but I didn't care about the Dexterity because my Faith was buffing that Black Flame Tornado instead. Flux Talisman also increases incantation damage and it works very well if you cast incantations, which this build, by the way, leaves a lot of room for. So here is the next bit, two incantations that I've been using with this build. One of them is the Black Flame and the other one is the Black Blade. I could have used a Giant's Flame instead of the Black Flame for much bigger damage, but honestly, I did not want to break the theme and that one also requires a longer cast. Black Flame is basically what I keep as a buffer when I cast can get close to the enemy and I still want some ranged options to take the enemies down, it definitely comes in quite handy. But the Black Blade on the other hand is the cherry on top, even though technically speaking this is usually what I cast at the start of a fight. Reason being is because this removes a huge chunk of the enemy's HP over a pretty long duration and especially against some of the, well, bosses in the game, it usually means that if I cast this two times, literally half of their HP is gone in just just an instant. It also works against the Elden boss, by the way, despite technically qualifying as holy damage. In fact, I couple this with the Black Knife Summon, and I will literally burn a ton of its HP at one point over 10k in one of its last phases, and this is still on top of that HP reduction that you are able to provide on top. Now, there's a difference between the Black Blade incantation and the Black Knife, which is an item that also casts a similar kind of projectile that kind of reduces enemies HP, well for the most part because of the casting animation being significantly faster and because the projectile reaches much longer, I decided to go with the incantation version instead and also because it's much easier to have an incantation rather than another weapon to worry about. And especially so that range was the biggest reason why I didn't use it. On a final note, for anybody who wants to see the stats, here
here they are 150 aiming for 80 cap into faith so i went with 75 points into that and making the last of the five with a marika sword seal meanwhile i suggest having a bit more points into mine than i did simply because some of these spell combos might be a bit too costly for just like 30 points into mine or 35 with a sword seal vigor i usually aim for the cap of just 40 so i can handle that it's a matter of preference and everything else again is a matter of choice maybe a few more points into dexterity so that you don't have to worry about equipping that god skin peeler like how i did and had to sacrifice a couple of these well charm slots this is it with the build totally let me know down below how are you running this setup are you doing something similar or are you just doing something completely different thanks so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video